My God, look at this. Which way? These terrible spelling mistakes. I mean, look at what a mess. Who's that thing? What? Hello, and welcome to Around the Bend. And boy, have I got a treat in store for all you benders out there tonight. And we interrupt this program to bring you a news flash. The USS Destroyer Unshakable was badly shaken in a storm today. The crew are all reported safe, but they lost a valuable experimental communications rocket and the captain's rubber duck. The police have appealed for the return of this valuable and top-secret item. And they wouldn't mind the rocket back as well. The seal? Ha <laughs> ha. But he hopes to be out of hospital in a few weeks. Duck! No, I didn't mean duck. I mean duck. Well, why didn't you say duck in the first place, you infested imbecile? But I don't... Ah, oh. hmm. I wonder what that is floating behind it. That's his bottom duck. No, the wooden crate with top secret written on it. Stupid. Oh, it's top secret. It could be valuable. I'll get it. Ah, doc, don't touch it. I've just heard a news flash. It could be dangerous. Stay well away from it, doc. It could go a boom, bang, a boom. Well, if it goes boom, bang, a boom, Lou, my old son, we're in through it for the Eurovision Song Contest. Still, sensible piece of advice. Uh, Vince, you go and get it. The Oddbod family. With Nancy's nose. Nancy, dear. Auntie Carol wants you to babysit your two little cousins tonight. Oh, no, please, Mum, I don't want to. Hello, Nancy. Bye-bye, Nancy. Hiya, Nancy. We play on your nose again. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Enough, bed. Where are the little rascals, then? Don't tell me they've been good. No trouble, Auntie. I'm keeping my eyes out of the room. Make me nose on them. Ow! 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 Oh, that was difficult, but it's finished. Even a moron could have followed those instructions, as you've just proved, Vincent. Wow, it's massive. You'd never have thought it came from just one crate. Yes, it's a big foot of engineering. Uh, um, big feet, Lou. So what? You have a bigger nose, but I don't go on about it. Yeah, but what are we going to do with it? Maybe she could have a plastic surgery. No, not Jemima's nose, stupid. The space rocket. Oh, oh we could go anywhere in that oh, thing. Oh, yes, we could go to prison for ten years for not giving it back. Do be silly. There's a faint point of law in dispute here. In the case of Smelby versus Sims, it was proven that the party of the first part, being ipso facto the legal proprietor of the misappropriated property, then quid pro quid and cognito ergo sum, the party of the second part, is partially proprietorial. In other words, feinders keep us... So he says, then? Yes. Anybody disagree, I'll throw the book at them, as well as the failing cabinet and the mahogany desk. But, but what are we going to do with it? Haven't you peanut brain Philistines realised yet? This is a communication satellite. All we have to do is launch it into orbit and we can broadcast round the bend to the world. Yeah, but there's one thing you haven't thought of, Doc. It needs a pilot. Hmm. Now then, who do we know who's foolhardy, has no thought for their own safety, not enough sense to fear for their own life? Um, um I can't think. Uh, exactly, Vincent. And that's where you're going. Oh, no! Don't worry, Benders. I'll gently revive him with this bottle of smelling salts, and you can listen to some music. Here's Banana Rama. Come on, wake up, you lazy louse-ridden loafer. Come on, wakey, wakey. That's it, that's it. I'll pull the hairs out of your muscles. Strange Tales of Psycho the Magnificent. Ah, good 
evening, sir. I am Psycho the Magnificent. Could I have a table for one, please? I'm afraid we're fully booked, sir. Oh, just a minute. My psychic powers tell me that the gentleman by the window is just about to leave. Uh, I'll just change the tablecloth for you, sir. No, allow me to change it with my magical powers into a bunch of stinging nettles. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Stop complaining. I would like to order a sheep's head. A sheep's head? I'm afraid that just won't be possible, sir. But the man on the other table has got... <laughs> oh, would, sir, please hurry up and order. Very well. Um, do you serve snails? Uh, yes, we do. Yeah. Good. Then maybe you could rustle up something for Chomper, my giant carnivorous snail. Oh, uh, what does he like? Like, sir. Oh, anything that's French and stinks of garlic? He's particularly fond of waiters. The service in here is useless. I'm going to have to help myself to something to eat. Luckily, I've been practicing my sword swallowing. <laughs> yum, yum. Plenty of iron there. <laughs> Uh-oh. Sounds like it's time to order up some frog's legs and hop it. Uh, 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 Got you, you loony. Uh, stop, stop. Ribbit, ribbit. I never asked for the bill. Next week, Psycho samples some of the food in a Turkish prison and ends up with the shish kebabs. Right, Vincent Mailed son. Before you go, there are a few points I'd like to fill you in on. <laughs> I don't want to go. Well, in that case, I'll just fill you in then. Go <laughs> Now, Vincent, have you got your space log? Check. Ace Bay Book of Outer Space Creatures? Check. Cosmic Compass? Check. Puncture Repair Kit? Check. Spare Wheel? Check. Suit? Check. Underpants? Spotted. Shirt? White. Shoes? Polished. Okay, Vince, we're ready for launch. Oh, no, I couldn't eat a thing, Doc. I said launch, not lunch, you dim-witted dolt. Oh! Great. Very soon, Vincent will be blasted off into orbit. That hostile void, that implacable expanse where no rat has gone before. To Star Trek, across the freezing universe, to those outer limits of outer space. Oh, Star Void, freezing universe. <laughs> Listen to the courageous critter. He can't wait to go. Oh. Oh. Yes, well, good luck, Vincent Mayo, son. Oh, no. Yes, right, here we go. Stand by for countdown. Oh. Fave. Oh. Tears of joy. Oh. Four. No. Shaking with emotion, he is. Three. Oh, help. Bless his little cotton socks. He can't believe his luck. Two. Oh. Oh, look, waving to his friends who unfortunately have to be left behind. One! Good day, Vincent. Farewell, my old son. Send us a postcard. The incredible adventures of Batman. Batham City, riddled with crime and vice. Yet one man dares to stand alone against the evil crooks who prey on the weak. Known only as Batman, large-bottomed avenger of the night. When danger threatens, the bot signal blazes in the night sky from the secret bot cave. The man with the brawny backside roars to the rescue in his wind-powered Batmobile. Bots away! Hoppla! Ah! Cheeky punks and low-down bums, like the pincher, are flattened by Batman's unique approach to crime fighting. <laughs> Lucky I'm wearing my armor-plated boxer shorts. Curses, what a bummer. And when the bottom line is reached, when all the criminals are safely locked away... It's a bum rap. The powerfully posterior Paragon returns home as all of Bottom City wonders, Who is Botman? Who is Botman? Probably some sort of undercover agent. I've heard he has a secret identity and leads a normal life when he isn't flattening felons. Hmm, he must be a master of disguise. Oh, well, bottoms up! Yes, Botman is really Goose Payne, wealthy millionaire, and nobody suspects his secret. Because the people of Botham City are so stupid, they think a coup de grace is a lawnmower. OK, Doc, I've aligned the satellite. <laughs> Gosh, it's marvellous up here. I can see all sorts. Mars, the Milky Way, Galaxy. Oh, there's a tube of Smarties. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. I see you haven't lost your sense of humour, Vincent. There's the sun. There's his dad. Oh, dear me. Yes, you have. I can see all the stars from up here. There's Tom Cruise washing his socks in the bath, Kylie Minogue playing with a wombat. Oh, or is that Jason Donovan? Look, will you stop sightseeing, you wretched rodent? There's work to do. Activate the satellite. Turn the power on. Right. Done it, Doc. Can I come back now? Come back? What do you mean, Vincent? Come back. Oh, can't you beam me down or something? Uh, look, Vincent, my old son, there's nothing in your contract about coming back. I want you to stay up there and maintain the satellite while it's in orbit. 
Oh. Well, how long will that be? Um, let me see, about uh, four or five... What? Four or five days? No, four or five centuries, Vincent. Oh, I'll starve to death while I eat. Well, you've got your emergency rations, haven't you? Uh... What emergency rations? Oh, you rotters, you've left me stranded, alone, friendless. You always were, Vincent. I'll show you, you rotten crook. You can't get at me up here. I'll show you. I won't let you broadcast to the world. I'll do it. Why should I let you get all the credit? It's time for my career to reach new heights. Me, Vaudeville Vince Vermin. I'm a star among stars. I shall broadcast to the world. If I must die, I will die laughing. Oh, no. The space has driven him crazy. Yeah, the space between his ears. No, poor Vince. He go loopy. He go Coco, he got bang bong biddy willy dilly. Yes, we'll stick that in the Eurovision Song Contest as well, I think. Whoa. Round the Bend proudly presents Nursery Crimes. Sing a song of sixpence, a pocket full of rye. Four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie. When the pie was open, the birds began to sing. <laughs> Put us in a pie again, we'll kick your head in king. <laughs> It's lovely to be going home with our new baby. Let's call him Chips. OK. I'm sure Chips will be in all the newspapers when he grows up. <gasps> oh, Joe, look. It's that hell's tomato you knocked down. Shh, carotene. Nobody knows I did it. The doctor might hear you. Coochie, coochie, coo. Ah, oh, what a sweet potato. He looks a real chipper and he's putting on fat. <laughs> Where's the proud father? Joe's at home, just vegetating. I'm worried about him. <laughs> You're worried and here's me just rabbiting on. <gasps> Please don't mention rabbits to me, Marge. Anyway, ever since Joe had that hit and run accident that I'm not supposed to tell anyone about, he seems to have aged ten years. Suddenly he's like an old potato. Poor Joe. Still, if things need smoothing over, you can rely on me. Thanks, Marge. Joe? Carrot Top? G'day? I'm home! Joe? Where are you? Stay away, Caratine. I'm in a stew and I just can't handle it. <gasps> I can't live with this guilt any longer. I'm going to end it all. Oh, Joe! You'll be in an even bigger stew if you jump in there. Please! Don't be so hard-boiled. Think of the baby. I am thinking of him. I don't want him to see his father fried for murder. Testing. Testing. One, two, three. <laughs> when do footballers go barking mad? When they play wolves. <laughs> What's the fastest string in the world? Concord. <laughs> what do elves hate after school? Their gnome work. <laughs> Why are all pelicans poor? Because they all have huge bills. <laughs> what do you call a Scottish cloakroom attendant? Angus McCoatup. <laughs> what do hedgehogs like to eat with cheese? Prickled onions. <laughs> Oh, Charles, turn that dreadful thing off. Actually, one's quite enjoying it. <laughs> Prickled onions, very good. <laughs> Why did the boy smell awful at school? Because he was part of the class. Who oh, <laughs> knew? This is terrible. This is terrible. See, and he hasn't even got to the one about the pinstripe zebra yet. And now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Tommy's magic time trousers. And one thing which has puzzled art experts for centuries is the enigmatic smile on the face of the Mona Lisa. I wonder how she did come to smile like that. Well, pull me on, Tommy, and we'll go back in time and find out, eh? OK, trousers. Hut. <gasps> Tally ho, and away we go. The fly's the limit! Yeah, brace yourself, Tommy! Well, here we are. This looks like the, um, 16th century. Yeah, and this looks like Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> Excuse me, Leo. Can we watch you paint today? I'm afraid I want to be painting today. My model's pet goldfish passed away last night. She too sad to smile. Oh, would you like another fish? Oh, well, there's not much point in hanging round today, then. OK, Tommy, pull me down and we'll travel back. Here we go! <laughs> Wait, don't go, boys. Hold it. Aye? Your funny-looking underpants have made my model smile. Don't move. I must uh, capture her expression. Wow! Well, time we were off, Leo. Thanks a lot. Oh, thank you, boys. <laughs> <sighs> Me? 
Why is it? So nobody knows the reason behind Mona Lisa's mysterious smile. Knickers. I beg your pardon. <laughs> if only he knew, Tommy. I. Hey? If only he knew. Stubby Broccoli and Samuel J. Greengrocer present the attack of the atomic banana. Innocent teenagers on an innocent beach, but little do these frolicking rock and roll and surf in hot rodders realize the horror that lies in wait for them. Anyway, says I'm right, muscle bound bozos. I hate them. It's not my fault. I was born fat. I got big bones. My mother fed me too much. Gee, Wacky, look at those tough guys, bent and steel bars with their bare teeth. Don't you just hate those show-offs? Not really. They pay for my acne cream. Uh, make way for the Surf King, puny. You must be that creep hunk. It's written all over you. We interrupt the rootin' tootin' rock and roll hour to bring you this urgent news flash. Hey, cool it, you cats. There's something on the radio. A giant radioactive banana is reported to have devastated an atomic research station and to have escaped into the sea. Teenagers in the Wipeout Beach area are asked to refrain from surfing and take up cookery instead. So here's today's recipe. <laughs> Hey, hey, how do I look, buddies? Uh, yeah, that's me. Tuck banana in a bunch. Ah! Jumping jukebox jockey shorts. It's heading this way. Quick, everybody. Panic. Uh, <laughs> Holy socks. Dirk, Bert, and Turk have gone bananas. Quick, Porky, lie down on top of us. But I'm not tired. No, stupid. With any luck, that far-out fruit will think you're a beached whale. <laughs> what? He said, it's working. It's leaving us alone. Now we've got to alert the authorities. Yeah, I thought he should. <laughs> Yo, Marshall, Marshall, Marshall here. My friends call me Marsh, 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 but you can call me Sir. What? Giant banana? There ain't no such thing as giant bananas. Beat it. Kick back, you horror. He won't listen. Okie dokie, this is real serious Aruni, Daddy O's. We're the only ones who know what's going on. Three lone teenagers against the most awesome piece of fruit that ever existed. Having disposed of the macho morons, the fearsome fruit peels off and stalks into the night, heading for the nearest breakable object, which happens to be Big City. Be here next week for the sheer unleashed terror that we call Mr. Wibble Wobble's Magic Orange Bicycle. Uh, sorry, I seem to have picked up the wrong script. Who put this in here? A cow and two acres. No. Uh, can't we shut him up? It's no good, Doc. But the satellite signal's too powerful. He's on every radio and TV in the world. So the optician said, I knew you needed glasses when he walked through my window. Oh. Uh. Reports are coming in from outer space of a strange creature who has taken over the entire world's satellite TV and radio channels. People are being driven mad by the awful jokes he's been telling. Like the one about the kangaroo in a straight jacket who was hopping mad. Some have been smashing in their TV sets and the heads of all the nations throughout the world are to meet to decide what's to be done. At all... Yes, it has just been announced that the world's powers have agreed to launch the Earth's entire nuclear arsenal at the object in outer space. No, look out. Oh, no, Vince, Vince, no, 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 oh, Vince. Doc, I didn't know you cared so much about Vincent. Vincent? Who cares about him? My precious satellite is going to be demolished. Oh, no. <laughs> and then there's one about the farmer and the ventriloquist and... Oh, oh no, poor Vincent. <gasps> poor, poor Vincent. He could never have survived. <laughs> He'd better have survived. He wants to take the cost of that satellite out of his wages. If he's not alive, I'll murder him. <laughs> that useless little reprobate. He was never any good. He's totally ruined my plans. Still, I suppose the little soon soon can't cause any more trouble. <laughs> True. I knew you'd be back. I'll come down on you like a ton of bricks. Oh, my head. Oh. Vincent, my old son, would you like to see a black hole? Oh, yeah. Or stick your head in my mouth. Oh, no, you're not.